Detroit, baby. We out here. You see what's going on. We activated. We ain't playing no games. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. This is GX from the Forum Magazine, man. And today's guest is a true hustler, man. A jack of all trades, man. Somebody that's been moving around the city, doing this thing, man. Just everywhere, man. I anywhere you can name it. Any location with all of the hottest upcoming artists in the city, um, they run across this guy, man. So our special guest today, man, and start to answer from Unlikely Connects, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother, man. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for yes, having sir. me. Yes, sir. Appreciate well, alaikum salam, brother, man. I appreciate you, man. You, you know, taking time out your busy schedule to come sit down with me, man. Um, you've been grinding. You know, you've been having a lot going on, man. Just talk a little bit about. You know, just how things been going, um, you know, thus far this year, man, with, with everything you got going on. I mean, this year uh, started out to be a busy year. Um, but, you know, we're trying to focus on the goals that we set out individually and collectively. Started out the year with uh, Hot Sam's. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. For I saw sure. that. That was dope. Yeah, yes, that was sir. dope. Yes, I seen sir. my man's uh bird. Who was it? What's his name? What's the yeah, brother bird, name? Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all was, yeah, yeah. was doing y'all thing, man. I mean, we can't forget Bad Habits, man. He made his debut down there, too. You know, oh, straight. Yeah, suit. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What color was that suit, bro? Gee, that no. Oh, he came yeah. gold on I mean, their ass. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I ain't going to talk about the pink one, though, but you know what I mean? It was, it, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how, how was that experience for you? Um, No, the experience was great, man. It's uh, actually something that's kind of fell in my lap Um, when it really – from the Forum Magazine, we were just talking about that when uh, my urban fashion, my urban modeling with my own clothing line and with Tez, uh, with Put Your People On and the other clothing lines throughout the city. Uh, shout out to my man B over there with Culture Currency as well. Yeah, shout out to B. Um, but Matt was actually interested in modeling. Um, he came to me and asked if I could plug him with model. I said, man, I don't know nothing about being a model, but I don't know. If I took the interest, I could tell you what I would probably do. Most definitely. So, you know, we shot down there to High Sounds. You know, I was already shopping down there already, uh, buying suits and things of that sort. Great place. Definitely go down there if you want to get your grown man on. Hollered at Lauren, and they was actually doing a casting call where they were about to try to get some models down there. Me and Bird went down there. We made a good impression, and we had the 100 years uh, anniversary of Hot Sam's doing business in Detroit as a black-owned business. That's dope, man. Yeah, Shout out to Hot Sam's, man, for even giving them opportunities for people. You know what I mean? Just to, you know, just to pop yeah. out and just so, show that sauce that they give. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, so, so, um, uh, management wise, man, I've been seeing you working. I've been seeing you, you know, do the uh, security. Um, but before we get into that, man, let's just talk about you. Let's talk about you. Let's go into your origins. Okay. Before we get into the unlikely connects and the brand that you done built. Um, for the people that don't know, if you could just share a little bit about your backstory, where you from, and what was life like growing up in Detroit. Um, well, I grew up in Detroit, West Side. I'm um, originally from Plymouth, Plymouth from Greenfield. I mean, my That's upbringing right. was like anybody else. You know, we ain't had the best of life, but we ain't had the worst of life. You know, mom, dukes, and everybody in the neighborhood did what they could, try to keep the kids in line, but it's not a fairy tale at the end of the day. Sure. Um, I try not to glamorize and, and put a spotlight on what they like to consider the conditions and, like, stereotypical shit. You know, it was our norm for the tax bracket that we was in, and our parents did our best. But sure. as children, you know, we had to make our own decisions. For sure, for sure. For me, like so many others, some of those decisions led to the streets. You know, uh, I tell people real quick, man, with me upbringing, I'm just being real with myself. Like, I really wasn't no street nigga, no hood nigga growing up. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my upbringing. You know, although my mother was single raising me, uh, my father did what he could when he was around, but you know, he had to get his shit together as well. Most definitely. Um, with that said, you know, my grandparents taught me manners and all of that, man. Yes, ma'am, no ma'am. How to open the door for a lady, pull out a, a chair. Mm -hmm. You know, you work on the you walk on the curb side of the street, things of that sort. You just knew how to behave yourself. Most definitely. Um, did you if I can, did you grow up in a household with as the only sibling? Do you got any uh yes, I have siblings, but with I my mother's child, I'm her oldest. Okay, okay. Um, so for me, for a very long time, I was the only child until my younger siblings uh, came along. Got you. Um, and I also have siblings on my father's side uh, as well. Got you. Um, but for the most part, for me, it was pretty much a single parent home and my mom and me, you know what I mean, all the way up until I was like 13. Most definitely. Um, the decisions that I made, you know, the streets, the shit was just more appealing. You know, I was a latchkey kid. Mom dudes had to work. 
Two mm, jobs. You know that's what I mean? the worst, man. Them last yeah. key kids is the worst. Yeah, so bro. basically, you know, she raised me, but I still raised myself. Indeed. You know what I mean? Didn't want to be out there with my friends and the influences that, you know, the neighborhood at that time uh called for. You know, I fell right in line with that. For sure. For sure. When you uh okay, so so jumping off the porch, um, if you can, like, like what type of person in the streets were you when you did switch that gear? Um, you know, it's different. Right. It's you got different type of street guys. You know, you got, got your you. hustler, you got your robbers, you got you know, just different type. What what would you classify yourself as at that time? Not glorifying it, but just so f- for the people looking in, maybe that could you know gain the something from your that story. Shouldn't have been a gangster. Mm. You know what I mean? I was too light in the ass. I was light skinned. Whether you want to believe it or not, I had hair at one point in time. <laughs> <laughs> But, I, you know, I used to um, look at my uncles, man, and, like, hear story of my uncles and shit and, like, idolize that shit. Sure. Um, and I felt like, shit, that's my legacy. Mm. All right? So, like, let me go out here and, like, I want to be talked about, like, how I be hearing motherfuckers talk about them. But, you know, for me, you know, street niggas are street niggas and alpha males and everybody trying to scrape out where they fit in out here. A lot of motherfuckers ain't taking me serious. You know, I threaten the motherfucking they look at my little ass. I'm like, get your ass out Yeah. Here. Like, yeah, I, right. <laughs> you know, so I had to fight a little bit more harder. Like I felt fight for my respect. You ain't mm-hmm. necessarily win them all, but you know, that was pretty yeah. much the type of nigga that I was like, you niggas go respect me. Like you just ain't go come at me no type of way, talk to me any type of way. For I'm just sure. like, I'm smaller than you. Like, for sure. If you bleed like me, we can fight. And then my thing was my uncle used to whip my ass every time I did something like bad, like nigga in the street. So you was yeah. immune to getting, you yeah, know what I mean? my opinion. Yeah. It's like, I'm in the house, grown ass man trying to discipline me. And like, he fucking me up. So man, y'all I ain't here got niggas chance. my age. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't got a chance. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I may not like whoop you to the ground, nigga, but you ain't gonna whoop me to the ground either. So For I sure. would just continuously fight. And I guess that's where that spirit of fighting came from. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm always bucking something that I feel uh, like is an injustice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a bucket. You know what I mean? You either go crack me or I'm going to crack you or we go have some understanding at the end of the day. For sure, for sure. So, yo, you know, just knowing a little bit about your your, your backstory, um, your street life ended up leading you to um, having to sit down for, for quite some time. Um, if you would just talk a, a little bit about, um, you know, entering into you know, prison, you know what I mean? How many years did you do? And what was the thoughts and feelings going into that situation? Oh, once again, man, being not necessarily a product of my environment, but wanting to be in that shit, I involved myself with, you know, everything else, man. Drugs, robbing, you know what I mean? Like, how the fuck we need to get it? Banging, like, we here. Mm -hmm. Um, That shit catch up to you. And unfortunately for me, it caught up to me when I was 18. Mm. Uh, Consequences, man, and, and, and having to deal with that shit, you know, slap me in that bitch for 20. At uh, 18 years old. Yes, sir. I mean, you're still a kid, you know. Technically, I was 17. I turned 18 in the county. Mm. You know what I mean? Still fighting. And I fought that shit for like two, three years. Um, then when they came down with the hammer, you know, the hammer was 20. However, in retrospect, it could have been worse. You know what I mean? Could have been in that bitch for the rest of my life with the charges that I was facing. So every time I go sit down and we go to that motherfucking judge and you hear the motherfucking charges be ran off, like the reality of that shit hit, like, damn, like my life is only being like this. And when you say I jumped off the porch, man, being realistically, you jumped off the porch about 14, 13, you didn't really start living life yeah, or sampling life to you like 15, 16. Sure. So the couple of years that a nigga had out there, like you ain't you a kid, nigga, you ain't experienced yeah. shit. And now no. you're about to be thrown in with a bunch of woods yeah, sure. like, and everything else how was that when you jump. walked in when you walked in you know not not necessarily the you know the county or you know what i mean nothing like that but yo yo when you walked into like quarantine going into prison yeah before you actually go to your location um, or wherever the county man was pretty much still a safe haven because you know you know a lot of motherfuckers in the county but when it actually came time to take that uh state trip uh just being real. I mean, I don't give a fuck how tough a motherfucker mm-hmm. is. Like your own imagination go how you scared. You like you don't if you don't know about that shit, you don't know what you're walking in. Yeah, it's the fear of the unknown. So yeah, exactly. So I mean I ain't no different than anybody else from that. I know tougher for a motherfucker right. to feel like, yeah, I had that shit hands down. I went in there unknowing and just knew I had to figure that shit out once I got there because they weren't going home no time. So for sure, for sure. Immediately when you got in there, was it a, was it hostile? Um, like like how was it? Because a lot of people talk about the differences between in prison from then to now and how violent and aggressive 
uh, shit was back then when y'all was coming through them, you know, through them tunnels. How yeah. was it? Like a bunch of angry black men having to take a real deep thought process of how long they was about to be confined in them walls. Like, mm-hmm. and everybody violent because everybody's scared, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like motherfuckers are trying to establish themselves immediately where they about to fall in the pecking order. But it's still a portion of that shit that ain't violent. For me, it didn't really phase me one way or the other other than just trying to prepare myself for when something come my way, what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so boom, uh, you you know, you're doing your time. And I assume that uh, at some point throughout that, throughout those 20 years, you hit a, a, a pivotal mark where mentally and uh, spiritually you begin to heal and, you know what I mean? go through a, a, your own personal transition, um, you know, which obviously led to, you know, where you are today and the things that you got going on right. now. Uh, at what point or what year was that that you began to reflect on some of your actions and kind of put life in perspective and say, hey, it's time to tighten up? That probably would have been about 12 years in for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was sitting in the box for about six months, uh, had to be like the umpteenth time that a motherfucker made that trip. But I don't know what it was about this particular time, bro. But like, you ever you ever heard that Michael Jackson song, um, Man in the Mirror? Yeah, hell yeah. For some reason, that shit was like kind of in my head, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I look in the mirror and I'm like, man, what the fuck I'm doing, bro? Like, I'm gonna fuck around, catch another case in here. Mm-hmm. Niggas go fuck around, kill me in this bitch. I'm gonna go home fucked up, not looking different. You know, mm-hmm. motherfuckers get hit with locks in that bitch, buck 50. They call it melting. They melt sugar shit like that down, throw that shit in the nigga face. Like I seen niggas skin melt, like all type of dumb ass shit. Um, but when you living in that environment, man, in that structure, you either become that shit. I seen myself becoming that shit. Mm. When like at my core, like spiritually, like yeah. you can go back to how I was telling you how I was raised and shit, like that shit not really me for real. Mm-hmm. So I think it's actually like an epiphany moment to where I realized like I'm not choosing to live my life. I'm letting everybody else and all of the situations and circumstances around me. Right. Dictate yeah, how, yeah. I, how no I live doubt. my life. No doubt. And I'm doing it so much. Like the shit is becoming mechanical, mm. you know? So regardless of what your regret, your resentment, so you just in the bottom like, man, fuck and this yeah. bitch again. You For know sure. what I mean? Um, I think that that moment is where I really clicked that I'm about to make my own fucking decisions where I stand with what I stand on, mm-hmm. and I don't give a fuck how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. Like I ain't really into the agreement, or you not understanding my move, or like I'm not, I'm not doing that shit for you. I'm doing that shit for me. I'm doing that shit for my creator, bro. Most and definitely. anything else in the middle just don't make sense. So for me, that was about twelve years in. Most definitely. Um, and ironically, when I made that decision, I became bored. Bored in the sense that most of the shit I was finding myself into had to do with the people around me and not being man enough to not tell a nigga mm-hmm. like. What is you doing that for? Mm-hmm. Don't make sense. So once I wasn't involving myself in all the extracurricular activities, you know what I mean? Allowing the circus, like, Yeah. So I started reading. Mm. The best thing that could ever happen. Right. Yeah. And then it just started enlightening me in so many different uh, avenues. Um, I know I said time after time, I really hate like reiterating the shit, but I uh, went there reading at a third grade level. Mm. So over the course of that incarceration, you know, I slowly but surely, with the help of others, uh, Started teaching myself how to read at a higher level. Yes, sir. And then that goes into all the academics of it. Got the GED, um, applied for college, knocked that out. And um, got my degree, associate's degree in business administration. Um, I have a scholarship where I'm about to go um, utilize uh, for my bachelor's degree. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 the boredom of not allowing yourself to be indulged in the negativity that has nothing to do with you only can create an environment for positivity. Mm-hmm whether you're seeking it out or not, because it's going to find you. Either one, because you're noticing so much negative shit mm-hmm. and you're realizing how stupid you look or the consequences of the train wreck that's going to happen because you're taking the time to actually think about that shit mm-hmm. and or something that can be beneficial for you over here. Absolutely. Um, and that's just coming at, 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 at a sense of take accountability for your fucking self and what you want to do and what you want to be. Now, if you want to be in the streets, you want to do all that, once again, man, I do you, but be the best at that shit. I was tired of being the best of something that I wasn't invested in and didn't have a return. Definitely. So I started investing myself to be the best of whatever it is, anything that I can get a return positively off of, regardless if it has negative effects. Mm. It's not easy being your own man. 
Real it's tough. not easy being your own woman. So come with negative effects of that because somebody's going to always have an opinion on what you're doing, how you do it. But I'm not doing that shit for you. For real. For real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, So at, at you go through that process. You go through that uh, personal transformation um, that you took upon that you took upon on yourself. Um, lead into the days that you, um, you know, was released, and um, ultimately the the actual day. I would just say the actual day. Um, what was the feelings? What was the thoughts? How 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 was things, man? When you stepped outside those gates um, for the first time in twenty years. I ain't think about none of the 20 years that I lost. All I thought about is the 20 years of now you just gave me the opportunity to do everything I've been planning for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's nothing else keeping me from walking in the circle. Mm -hmm. Like these gates ain't got me. I've been walking in the circle thinking the minute I can walk in a straight line, you yeah. motherfuckers, it's not about to see the fuck I'm about <laughs> straight to Straight up. <laughs> straight up. No doubt. No doubt. Um, first thing that you did when you actually did uh, you know, come, you know, come to the city, come back to the city. Right. I don't know. Was you up north when you when you left? Oh uh, no, they brought me down. Okay, uh, cool, yeah. cool. So, but so when you when you you know moving around, what was some of your first moves that day? Uh, it was just I don't know, man. It was like slow motion. You know what I mean? My son came up, my daughter came up, my brother told me that he wasn't gonna be there. He came all the way from Texas. Ah, and shit. that's love. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I ain't gonna be able to make it, bro. You know, popped up on you popped anyway. Up, that's what's up. Uh, there's so many damn cars out there, bro. That shit was ridiculous. They was like, man, man, we don't know who you is, but all these damn cars out here, like Straight we can't. <laughs> Straight Straight one person out here Real picking talk. you up. Real talk. Bro. Um, but yeah, I mean, the breath of, of a fresh air. It's like being born again, man. Mm. Yes, sir. Being born again. Yes, so, sir. Absolutely. So. You got this this brand, man, that you've been pushing, um, that's been permeating throughout the city. Um, Unlikely Connects. Um, I feel like Unlikely Connects is growing into like a real staple in the city. Like if you know, you know. Um, <laughs> on that base level, man, when you talking about like just raw underground talent, people that's you know solidifying themselves and building they you know they selves up. You got your hands all in that pot. Um, talk a little bit about Unlikely Connects and what inspired you to come up with uh, with this company and brand that you got. Y'all did. <laughs> so Unlikely Connects was just born with the aspect of there's a network around me, right? And the network is tapped in with me and I'm tapped in with the network. Like I listen to people. So I have ambitions and I have goals too. So when you take the opportunity to actually listen to a man, you ask questions like, tell me about your business, man. Tell me about your brand or like what that means. Starting to realize that I have a lot of things and connections with individuals and we have the same ambitions. So with that said, I just started networking shit. I liked your clothes. I start supporting you. They start supporting me, and then just one thing led to another. But at its essence, Unlikely Connects just has to do with just building generational wealth and opportunities mm -hmm. uh, within our communities and communities that are broad that have the same agenda of making sure that our communities flourish. Um, the brand, the idea of Unlikely Connects actually came from my mother with uh, a lot of individuals that I was networking and connecting with. Uh, local talent, uh, rappers, um, writers, directors, uh, politicians, um, different things that I was involved in as far as community outreach, as far as literacy, financial literacy, um, uh, addressing the mass incarceration issues, mm -hmm. um, uh, addressing uh, policing issues, uh, parenting issues, and so forth and so on. Um, and I just started connecting the resources and where the similarities were taking place. Mm -hmm. um, I'm heavily involved with the Detroit Public Theater. Um, I've done several Shakespeare plays. Um, I actually get uh, book gigs uh, through the Detroit Public Theater uh, with reaching back for different topic subject matters. The point that I'm making is I start pulling all of these people together where they start having similarities at, where people start asking me, hey, do you do such and such? Mm -hmm. Like, no. And I would say yes, but then I would pass that referral on right. to somebody that I knew. Right, right, so right. So people start engaging in with So me. you're like the ultimate liaison between... Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the plug for sure. <laughs> but I, it's you see the plug in the, in, the, in the organic sense. Like I actually, if you ask me if I'm cutting grass, I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the guy who cut my grass. 
you know, it's just, it only makes sense. You cut my grass. Yeah. So if I'm building you up, you now you're able to buy better equipment to make my lawn look even better. Mm -hmm. um, and then your business may get so big that now you can hire my niece or my nephew when they yeah, need a summer yeah. job, et cetera. So that's just my logic going in. How can I be a benefit of you? And how can you be a benefit of me? Most definitely. Most definitely. And how can we flourish together? Um, and Tez, I got to definitely give a shout out to Tez, man. Uh, he gave me a lot of insight and jewels and how to navigate with who I was because he knew me personally. Mm -hmm. Like he seen my struggle. He seen my confliction. Mm -hmm. He seen my growth. So coming out here, man, when me and the brother sat down, naturally so, he said, I got a bag for you, but it ain't physical. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. talk to me. And then the brother just started giving me jewels. This is what I'm on. This is a lane. There's an opportunity for you here. If you don't feel that'll work out for you, maybe we can create another opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, so I soaked all of that in. And let's clarify, I'm of older distinction. <laughs> this brother is uh much younger than I. Um, but wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man, from where Allah chose to take you in a particular direction. Um, doesn't dictate the, the knowledge that you have Absolutely. to give. Um, so I just I soaked that up for what it was and I applied what I had coming to the table. Most definitely. And then uh, Allah tells me in the Quran, I don't have to try to find a friend. I don't have to try to find an ally. Allah says, if you stay true to me and you stay true to being a Muslim, I will give you that. Sure. And the way that he gives you that is it's just being who you are and people are naturally going to be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Satan will too, though. Mm. So you can't be confused about that because the closer you get into your greatness, the closer you get into who you are and being your own motherfucker, Satan's he losing. Absolutely. So now he got to find a way to get up in there, too. So you really got to be careful. Mm -hmm. But a law is still attracting people around you. And that's just going to show in due time with confliction. And what I mean by that is when things really get hard, like you see this shit in social media all the time. Ain't nobody supporting me. Ain't nobody doing this. Ain't nobody. Why I give a fuck? Why I'm wasting my energy on that? That's the Satan being attracted to my fucking greatness mm. and flipping the fuck out. And I'm not about to give you no fucking credit complaining about your shit. That's like giving you saying good job. Right. You know Just on the flip. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't yeah. Act like I try not to complain about that shit. However, the people that are lost sending in my path, we're in the court. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't got to sit back and watch you and try to figure you out because I'm living my life a certain type of way. According mm -hmm. to a certain set of guidelines and rules, you're going to be cle clearly identifiable to me. And when the red flag comes up, the red flag is something that contradicting to the way that I'm living my life. You ain't for me. Oh, definitely. Um, that energy has brought people around me. I, they could tell you better than I just shit that I didn't heard. Mm -hmm. Like you don't change. Like I am what I am, bro. Most I definitely. am what I am. Most definitely. This is what I'm on. This is what you on. How can we make money together? Or how can we benefit each other? Because mm -hmm. it ain't for me. It don't never really got to be about money. Most definitely. What is the opportunity? What is the knowledge you can give me to go seek this shit out and make my own bag? Indeed. What Indeed. time are you willing to invest? For sure. And speaking about that too, man, like I seen um, like a major move that you made. Um, and I've been seeing you working real close with uh, Kim from uh, Electric Elevations, and um, I've been seeing y'all move around, um, hitting different events, um, and I also see you, um, you know, in your manager bag, too, you know what I mean, um, with your with your two artists uh, right here, Bad Habits and uh, CB, I want to be right and exact. Yo, Cannon. Cannon? It's pronounced Cannon. But it's pronounced what? But it's spelled. It's, it's, it's spelled what? -N -N that is different than the motherfucker. I ain't gonna I lie. And I love it. And you feel me? But please it. don't be mm -hmm. mad at me because you know that's different. <laughs> he gave me that look like, bro, you supposed to know it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm reading. <laughs> yes, sir. But Kenny, um, yeah, so you got two dope artists, man, that's like really doing their thing. Um uh, let me clarify too. We have another artist uh as well, and I definitely have to give him uh mm -hmm. credit, uh Sight Shotter. Oh man, yeah, I ain't even yeah. know Sice was a bit. Shout out to Sice Shotter, yeah, man. Absolutely. You know, he had his car accident, man. The brother uh, suffered um, a very, very uh, horrible car accident. You know, he broke his neck. He had to have surgery, had to rehab, and he bounced back like he just fell off a bike, man. Mm. That brother is a soldier. That brother is a fighter. Straight um, up. But yeah, Sice Shotter as well. He's in the camp. Yeah, man. Salute to Sice, man. So just talk about what. Um, you know, just in general, what y'all got going on and, and, and just the whole conglomerate 
with with you and um electric elevations and you know just everything that y'all got planned with y'all artists what y'all been doing and you know just things upcoming yeah um when it comes to kim and i at electric elevation um and our management style um we manage and co-manage artists together uh you know she may be a manager of artists uh co-manage i can be a manager of artists. she co-manage but we're bringing our resources together to give our artists the best opportunities um possible to help advance uh, their career absolutely um, we deal with artists that have a budget we deal with artists that's taking their career serious we take uh, we deal with artists um, that know the direction that they want to go and what they're trying to achieve um, and I'm just being realistic some of the aspects and aberrations of some artists that I can't work with you know that's above my pay grade for sure right I know where I'm at but once I get there and we get them resources you know I give you a call back and we can sit down um, but we making sure that, you know, they're getting a streamings, um, that we getting them shows and that we getting those views up. That's going to translate into the career of selling your art for monetary gain. Most definitely. But you got to invest in yourself and working at it. For sure. What, what it's been like uh, working next to Kim? Kim been in the game for a while and yeah. she got a lot of, you know, knowledge and wisdom about the game. Uh, what it what has been like, you know, sitting sitting next to her, man, and just soaking up everything that she, you know, all of her experiences and stuff like that. I mean, I would speak on it, then the Goon Squad will come in here. That's like in a contract. Like, we can never tell what happens at, you know what I mean, the <laughs> sure. mob table with the, with, the, with the queen, you feel? Indeed. But, but no, man, it has been um, very informational, uh, refreshing. Um, I think we vibe well um, off each other. She got a lot of game. Um, and, you know, she's willing to, you know, teach the game, and she's also willing to listen, too. You know, I got a lot of game like, oh, as definitely. well. But I think that it works so well with her and I uh, because the relationship started from business. Right. Um, and, you know, some business things go like how they need to go. Other things don't. Um, but she kept it so professional in business and like how she moved mm -hmm. that got my attention. For sure. You know, um, we did a couple other ventures together. And then, you know, it was only natural that, you know, we felt that we click up. Um, and bring her resources and mine to the table. But I always came to the table like, you know, I'm not a manager. Um, but she's seen how my relationship was yeah. with the artist. She saw manager right. qualities. Yeah. Even and if you the didn't artist has started yourself. seeing those as well. Yeah. Um, so I was more than eager to sit down and learn. Uh, and then that just opened up the opportunities for us to get uh, the resources that we need for me uh, in order to start representing the artist properly that wanted me to manage them. So Most definitely. Kim's company was... A, a, a unlikely move that had to be made. Yeah, right. right. You say an unlikely <laughs> yes, move that absolutely. had to be made. That's absolutely. right. To elevate the brand to another level. So the immersion with Electric Elevation and Unlikely Connects and me teaming up with unlike, uh, Electric Elevation on the management team only made sense. Most definitely. So um, if 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 possible, man, I, I'd love to get, get these artists uh, in a little bit. Absolutely. Canon, what's the, well, what's the deal, brother? How you doing, man? Right. Man, so you know, we sitting right here, man, with uh with Ansar, you know what I mean? And um, you know, of course he just been talking about everything that y'all, you know, been working on and got uh going on, man. If you could just talk a little bit about the benefit of having this guy right here, you know what I mean, as a manager. So this guy right here. Be careful. <laughs> This guy right here, bro. Can I cuss? Yeah, yeah. This bro. guy right here, motherfucker, bro. <laughs> hey, it's, it's dope, though. I ain't gonna lie. He definitely had me uh, in different places that I probably wouldn't normally be in. Um, he definitely exposed me to a different crowd that I wasn't tapping into. Mm -hmm. um, I ain't gonna lie, but we, we had a relationship before he became my manager mm -hmm. or it. He's like, he really like my brother, bro. For sure, like, for sure. Like, I forgot about the interview that he asked me to pull up. But I just pulled up in front of his house like, yo, I'm outside. Right, What's right. Up, bro? He pulled up. He's like, listen, bro, hold up. Uh, brother time. He talking to me for 30 minutes on the phone, man. <laughs> on the phone, like, man, we had a good time last night, man. You up yet? Like, yeah, talking. Got to, what's the plan? What we doing today? I'm like, I don't know. Pull up on me. I'm already in the driveway. No doubt. No so, doubt. Yeah. No doubt. In terms of, uh, like, okay, so you say, boom, like, like, a lot of different rooms or just certain things that you probably wouldn't have, you know, been tapped into yeah. uh, prior to him. Uh, if you could just talk about like, cause I know you just came out with a project uh, this year, if I am mistaken. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, man, and you've been having a lot of motion with that. Uh, what what's been your uh, recipe for success um, this year and with this project? Work, promo, push, work, promo, work. Stay. <laughs> network, <laughs> network, <laughs> network. For sure, for sure. Pulling everybody together, tapping in with everybody. Sure. That's how. Um, but the the hardest video that we dropped off the Mega Nine so far is Maniac, and I came up with the initial concept. But I really gotta give the rest of the credit. He did that, bro. For sure, one hundred. He did 100. that, bro. One hundred, man. <laughs> you know, let me go check that is. video out, man. Yeah, oh, yeah y'all yeah, go man. ahead and tell me where to find you at on social media, on YouTube, and and all of that good stuff. Canon, C V N N O N. Just type it in. It's it's too different to miss. That's right. That's right. So let's get habits in here, man. Hey yo, yes, sir. <laughs> My God, how you feeling, bro? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Likewise, man. Been working, been grinding. Yeah, um, yeah. man. What it's been like? What it's been like, man? Working with this brother, man, to the right of you, man, and, and, and your journey, and you know, just elevating as an artist with with, with him. This shit just moving, man. Everything just moving, man. Everything just moving forward, man. Straight up. Straight That's up. That's all I can say for real. You just passed a lot of shit up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no hey, but no, I know the vibes though. Passed I know the shit up. No, moving. for real though. I know the vibes, man. Sometimes it be like that. Sometimes the, you know the only way to explain something is a simple way. That's you know what I mean? Right, real bro. talk. Um in, in terms of if you could talk a little bit about your project and what you what you done dropped this year and pre did it. You know what's been the what's pre diddy, man. One more time. I'm pre diddy. Fight. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, boy, uh, shit, I just dropped Free Diddy, though. You feel me? My motherfucking brother went to jail and shit. That was like my manager, too. They both was my manager, mm -hmm. you feel me? So I really had like a two headed mind. For sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. For me, sure. I just pushed the music. You feel me? I'm all about this music shit, mm -hmm. bro. So, shit, I dropped Free Diddy. He just went to jail for it, like last year or some shit like that. Basically, shit, it feel like a year. Mm -hmm. feel like that name was gone seven. For real, for real. So, shit, yeah. I dropped that shit. Shit, my motherfucking, uh, Highest view shit on there, it's higher higher ranking. That shit got him on that bitch. We in the video or all that. Straight shit. up, yeah. straight up, straight yeah, up. Yeah, I got like seven. I probably got like five other videos off that bitch. If you can, throughout that project, what's the biggest benefit of having a manager like 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 bro? Like, what's the big biggest benefit? You know, especially it's like having another you. You feel me? If I was me two times or times two, you mm -hmm. feel me? If you get what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. It'll be this one. For sure, me? for sure. 100. You know what I'm saying? 100, 100, man. If you can, bro, let the people know where to find you at on Instagram, where to find you at on, on YouTube and all that good stuff. So they can know. B A B D X H A B B I T S. X Habits, man. Everywhere. Yeah, you know the vibes. That's how we playing it, you man. Shit, man. Not for the record. I'm about to get out. We're going to go on and get Kim in. You feel um, me? Let, so, let... yeah, man, we talked briefly about Kim, man. But, you know, she in the building. So, it's only right that, you know what I mean? You, you know, have a seat with us and, you know, just, just talk a little bit about, you know, what you, what y'all have been doing, y'all union and, and, and uh, partnership with, with, um, Electric elevations and unlikely connects. If you can, just talk about it from your perspective. I got his perspective of the the connection, but if you can. Okay, so electric elevation was a movement of my own I created initially. Um, for y'all still be able to be heard or whatever, but I I, I just want to make sure. Okay, so. I'm gonna start off. Yeah. Okay. Electric elevation was a movement that I created on my own initially. Um. I started off um, with my podcast in like the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And from my podcast, um, I was interviewing entrepreneurs and artists in a hip hop community, artists that were unheard and artists that were not getting a lot of recognition, but they still had as much talent as bigger artists. So that was my target goal. Um, I want to shout out to uh, Ken Brass and Sound Off Sunday. I used to go over there. Oh, um, man. Shout out to you. Yeah, shout out to yeah. Ken. I met a lot of artists over there. I just I was always out in the field meeting artists, going to showcases, doing a lot of stuff. Then I started throwing my own shows, meeting artists, and then artists started tapping into me. They liked the way I moved uh, to do management because initially I wasn't even doing management. I was only doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. So from my podcast, I met so many people, got invited to do so many things, got in so many, led to just so many opportunities, put me in so many different rooms, positions. So then I started managing artists. So again, it's just all about um, 
trying to get people heard and seeing that people are overlooking because we come from a city where it's a lot of clout chasing going on. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people that don't get recognition that truly have pure talent and they need to be heard and seen as well. Mm -hmm. So then when I met Azar, he had a similar vision. We were both like-minded individuals just trying to, you know, put people on. Like, what would he say? Mm, put your people put on. Your people, on. <laughs> people that, you know, were just talented and not being heard. And then it was also a lot of artists that needed guidance. So it's yeah. a lot of artists that don't know what to do, where to go. Mm. They're out here doing music. They don't even have their writer number. They don't have their BMI set up. They don't have their ASCAP, up, ASCAP set up. So it's a lot of artists that just needed direction, um, just a little bit of help. Like, Foundation, they got it, but they yeah. just need a little bit of, you know, a guidance. So Indeed. even if um, our artists don't want management, we still offer consultation as well. So like I said, um, you know, we manage. We do ask for artists to have a budget, even if it's a smaller one, but you do have to have Something some type of budget. With. You have to invest in yourself. So um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just about trying to get the artists heard in the city. Detroit has a lot of talent. It's a lot of artists out here, rappers, singers, poets that um you might you may have never never even heard of them. But when you hear that music, you say, Oh man, that's how it sounds like industry. Absolutely. But that's all we're trying to do is just make people aware of what what's really out here. Absolutely. And I just want to say really quick the services, all the services that we um offer, um I electric elevation management does have its own distribution now. Which is through video. Video is used by Rock Nation. Um, I can get you your music uploaded um, in 24 hours. Distro Kids makes you wait, but I, I have uh, the resources where I can get you uploaded in uh, 24 hours. Um, I can get you on JPay. I can get you on BET Jams. So um, any artists that um, want to talk about distribution, you can DM me or Anzar as well. We both offer um, consultations, management service services on um, how to set you up to get your writer number, how to get your LLC. And I do trademarks and and am a notary as well. Oh, y'all do the whole <laughs> situation, the whole thing. Shit, they might as well just come. Hey, hey, just come with your bag. Hey, just shout come with your bag, and you're gonna be together. Stop playing. I want to give a shout out to GX as well. He's um like minded as well. Um, just trying to sh uh, shed and shine light. I'm on those that are doing things in the city. Shout out to all the other podcasters as well. People that's, you know, uh, making Detroit shine. Like, yeah, as I got great energy. And then even if what I do like about working with him, I might have a different perspective and then we'll both talk about it. He might change mine. I might change his. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's never sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> It's never where we don't have uh, open communication about a situation. But again, shout out to everybody in the city that's doing their thing. If you can talk, what, what's some of the artists that you personally uh, work with? Um, you know. Okay. Um. So I work with uh, the Bank Boys. Thank you. Shout the out to the Bank Boys, the hottest group in Michigan. Y'all got to go check them out. Uh, they just had a billboard uh, where they were um, endorsed by Maury Shoes. Um, shout out to uh, Mr. Drive. Yeah, y'all better stop playing with them boys, <laughs> man. Stop that, playing with them. What y'all gotta know is that ain't nobody bringing them fucking Murray <laughs> shoes back, but them guys. You feel me? So if y'all start seeing motherfuckers wear Murray Murray shoes again, <laughs> you feel me? Y'all yeah, can get that get that credit to the Bank yeah. Boys, man. Shout out, shout salute out. to all them guys shout over them. there. Man. Shout out to the CEO. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Drysdale and VP Rowley. And then shout out to Tone Lou, who's another um, that. artist that I work <laughs> yeah, under. Dummy Roll in the building. Yep. And then I want to give a shout out to uh, DJ Killer K, one of the hottest engineers For in the sure. city. But other than that, we working, we moving. And anybody that got any questions or want to work, you know, feel free to hit us up. But remember, you got to have a budget now. Got to have that budget because they're going to get you all the way together. For sure. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Ansar, um, if you can, man, like any uh, like closing remarks, anything that you really want the people to know, look out for anything like that in closing. Yeah, it's short to the point, man. We see the plug. We hear enough. And one more thing um, I'm, we're going to have coming up. It's a lot of um us that have our own brands. Canon, I have a clothing brand. Um, Anzar has a clothing brand. We're going to put on a big fashion show coming mm. up soon. And we're going to put on one because it's not trying to be funny. It's a lot of the same artists that have, I mean, the same designers that are on these shows. But I'm going to do um, a fashion show where it's a lot of designers that haven't never did a walkway show. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be some bigger ones there too, but I'm going to make sure that it's some uh, slots for artists that have never even participated in a, a mm -hmm. fashion show. It's going to be big. We're going to have a headliner artist. So that's going to be um, coming up soon. We'll put those details out as soon as I put everything together. For sure, for sure, man. Y'all heard it, man. We got Unlikely Connects, Answer to Answer. Y'all tap in, man. 
Kim, Electric Elevations. We had Bad Habits in the building. We had Cannon in the building, man. Um, the squad is deeper than that. So what y'all see right now, don't even... Okay, I'm going to keep that under wraps. Y'all going to follow me too. <laughs> <Elevation>. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. We want to make sure we get that, yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah, handle man. from Kim. <laughs> Y'all make sure y'all go follow Kim. Kim, if you can, let them know where sure. to follow you at. Y'all make sure y'all go out to at Electric Elevation. That's E-L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E-L-E-V-A-T-I-O-N. You heard that first. Y'all know what Y'all got to make sure y'all get y'all trademarks and get y'all um, names registered because people will try to steal your stuff. Absolutely. Okay, okay, y'all. Okay? So we want to make sure we giving out good information and guiding people in the right direction. Peace. Indeed. Indeed. Unlikely Connects, man. Unlikely Connects. At Unlikely Connects Music, at Unlikely Connects Clothes, yeah, at yeah. Unlikely yeah. Connects Management, at Unlikely that's Connects. Oh, that's what, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay, <laughs> what I, got, I got a mobile bar as well. All right, straight up. Okay, okay. Right. okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You got to drop all, all, all back. services, professional Love services, that. corporate services, um, bachelor party services. So I, I have girls that we can come out, they come out a button down collar shirt with a tie on or a leotard and fishnets, whatever right. type of event you got. Follow at Kim's Tasty Treasures, full bottle service offered as well. That's what it is, man. Post of the culture. Let's get it. <laughs>